Hi, I'm Diane Allen and welcome to This Is Me. On today's show, we will be talking with Katrina McCurdy, an independent travel agent and owner of Royal Escape Travel, which is part of Intel Travel. She will be talking with us about the travel industry, how it has changed during the COVID pandemic, what's open and what's closed. We will talk about what you need to know to stay safe if you plan to travel and where to go for the best price. Before we get started, if you like today's show, please hit the like button, the notification button for the upcoming segments. Subscribe to my channel and also please leave a comment. This is me is on all social platforms and information is at the bottom of the screen. We're also now available on most podcast platforms such as Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Overcast, Breaker, and Radio Public. I want to thank you, my viewers and listeners for tuning in. Hi Katrina and welcome to This Is Me. Uh, thank you for agreeing to come on the show and being a guest. I've been looking forward to this day for a while. Mm -hmm. I want to again thank you. And I um, want to say your family. <laughs> yes, I am. And uh, your sister was married to my late brother, James. So um, we have known each other for many, many years, and we won't say how long. <laughs> Not at all. Um, but I want you to just tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. My name is Katrina McCurdy, Philadelphia, born and raised. And I was the first one of my mother's children born here. Uh, we had 10, there's still nine of us living. And uh, I work for the federal government currently. I've been there for over 30 years. Wow. And we'll be able to retire in a little over four years and also have my own travel business. And wow. that's what I'm here for, to Ooh. talk about that. That's it, yes. So I do. you said you've been working for the government for 30 years, you're still employed uh, with them, and also you have started your own travel business. So I want to just talk a little bit about that before we get into some of my other questions. Okay. Um, so what made you get interested in the travel industry? Well, I've been traveling my whole life. My mother was the only one of her siblings that moved north. The rest of them stayed in North and South Carolina, so we were always traveling mm -hmm. to North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. And my mother was actually part of the family reunion committees when we first started them, so she did a mm -hmm. lot with bus rentals and getting uh, hotels and different things like that. So I've seen it behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And so with running the family reunion, I saw what she did as I got older. Mm -hmm. I was on a few committees myself. So I always tell people, if you've been on a family reunion committee, you are already a travel agent. You yes. just didn't know you were. Yeah. <laughs> because there's so many things that are connected with that. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how I started. And then mm -hmm. we transitioned into going to Disney and other places. And then also with my profession with the federal government, mm -hmm. I've also traveled a lot with that as well well. So you're just a little travel bug. I am. <laughs> I love it. Now, um, it's also, I read recently you received an award. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that award uh, you received. Absolutely. So there are different levels that you can have within uh, the mm -hmm. travel uh, industry with the uh, company that I'm with. Mm -hmm. And so I became a dream builder. And so you go to classes and you learn a different uh, companies that the person can use and you actually take tests. I didn't know I would be in class again <laughs> but I fully understand why because mm -hmm. they want to make sure that you learn everything that you do so they teach you a little bit about the cruise line industry mm -hmm. also hotel industry. I became a Marriott specialist. Wow. Yes um, mm -hmm. you can actually get a PhD with Norwegian so there's di different levels that you have so I became a dream uh, builder and a vacation builder oh. also a dream maker and vacation builder with my company. Oh, well, congratulations <laughs> on that. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, I know that uh, Women 50 and Plus, many of them um, have decided to have a second career mm -hmm. or, you know, redefine themselves. So do you think that the travel industry would be a good choice for a 50 plus woman or anybody who's thinking about uh, maybe switching gears mm -hmm. or, you know, doing something differently? I would say absolutely because there are so many different components to travel mm -hmm. and even though we think we know it, I know once I got in I didn't mm -hmm. realize that 
um, entertainment was a part of travel. Mm -hmm. So you can go online and get tickets for any shows that come up. Sports mm -hmm. is a part of travel. So you can buy your sports tickets that we know people will travel miles to see their favorite teams. Yes, that's right. So travel actually connects with almost every aspect of our lives. Because mm. in some form or fashion, we have to travel to do other things. Right. Whether it's car rentals, mm -hmm. road trips. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of family do road trips. We grew up doing road trips. Right. And so that's a part of travel. Mm -hmm. So many different components. AAU teams. Mm -hmm. So I know my daughter played AAU basketball basketball for years so I was traveling up and down the East Coast for wow. five years mm -hmm. <laughs> of course <laughs> with her and then of course when she went away to college the same thing you're traveling for that reason yes spring break mm -hmm. now a lot of people are traveling for the holidays mm -hmm. so to me it's such a great profession destination weddings I forgot about that there are so mm -hmm. many people who started doing those yeah. so it's almost every aspect of our lives mm -hmm. travel is part of it yeah I mean you just have to have money to, to, <laughs> to travel the way that you really I know the way I would like to travel absolutely you know? but um, far as the business aspect um, concern mm -hmm. I mean being an agent is one thing but actually you own your own business so mm -hmm. uh, I mean how did that um, come about well, I am actually an independent contractor with a company called IntelliTravel, mm -hmm. and so they are actually a brick-and-mortar travel agency oh, okay. that's in Delray Beach, Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, the company that I'm with, we currently have over about 58,000 um, members, mm -hmm. and so um, the business is out there. It's a mm -hmm. lot you don't have to do by yourself. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to worry about setting up like a website. Yeah. So they handle all of that for me. Mm -hmm. So there, even though every business has a startup cost, it's just so minimal compared to a person who has to go find something that's brick and mortar themselves. Right. Right. The greatest thing is modern technology. Mm -hmm. You can do so much from your phone, your yes. laptop, your tablet. That's true. So nowadays, you don't have to sit in a building really to work. Mm -hmm. And because there are so many things on the internet, I could sit here right now and actually book somebody trip right. on my phone. That, yeah, that's <laughs> very, very true. Everything Absolutely. is so virtual nowadays. Absolutely. Now, um, I want to talk about, you know, of course, COVID mm -hmm. and, and the travel <laughs> agents, the travel industry. So uh, how has that changed everything? There are definitely some things that have changed. Mm -hmm. I am actually quite surprised that travel is not doing worse because I mm -hmm. kind of thought it would for mm -hmm. a while. The first two months we were hit mm -hmm. and of course the companies were smart enough to even stop certain things. So yeah. I was happy that I didn't even have to worry about telling some of my customers to cancel because the company that we book with said hey we're closed yeah. we're canceling so we're going to send you a full refund mm -hmm. but what i found is that actually a lot of my clients book till next year mm -hmm. so a lot of people still want to do those dream trips they like okay we cannot do it now right. but it's something we still want to do so mm -hmm. 80 percent of my bookings actually just transitioned mm -hmm. to 2021 mm -hmm. and so i was actually happy with that i had right. really only two that actually canceled so completely mm -hmm. of course because of the timing and they just they couldn't rebook right there are a lot of people who are doing uh, vacations closer to home mm -hmm. so we live in the Philadelphia area so a lot of people mm -hmm. are doing the Poconos yeah. they're doing Ocean City Maryland so mm -hmm. they're doing places where they can drive if they're mm -hmm. uncomfortable taking the plane yeah and then we found that the those people who love to travel mm -hmm. they're going on their travel they're getting great rates yeah and so people haven't stopped booking they mm -hmm. just trained transitioned how, how they're how booking. They're booking. Yeah. So it's actually still doing very well. Yeah. That's, that's, that's really good. Absolutely. You'd be thinking everybody's home, you know, you, you hear stay home, stay home. So you'd be thinking nobody's traveling, nobody's going anywhere. Mm -hmm. But you're telling me it's, it's almost just the opposite. Absolutely. In, in many cases anyway. <laughs> like I said, if they don't um, go by plane, they'll go by train or, or car or whatever but absolutely people are still traveling they are still traveling mm -hmm. and as we saw the other day sports are starting to open mm -hmm. we see people were at the uh, at yeah. the Eagles game right <laughs> so we're slowly getting back to normal mm -hmm. of course we're not where we were mm -hmm. internationally we are not where we were either yeah. but as far as with um, national travel mm -hmm. that has definitely bumped up that's wonderful mm -hmm. and, and you answered many of my questions already <laughs> um, now that things are open what you know what 
some of the safety measures uh, that they um, put in place. You know? uh, uh, yeah, a lot of the hotels are only at 60%. Mm -hmm. So they're not booking to full capacity. Mm -hmm. I know when we went to Ocean City, Maryland, even for pool usage, you had to register ahead of time mm -hmm. and it would only be you and your family in the pool and you would have an hour oh, time. So wow. I was actually shocked. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. that's a great idea. Yeah. So the vendors and the, the, the companies that we use, they mm -hmm. have been doing a lot mm -hmm. with airlines. They're leaving that middle seat open mm -hmm. or just letting families sit together. Mm -hmm. So a lot of companies have adjusted as well. They want their employees to be safe as sure. well as their customers. Customer, so right. they put a lot of things and of course as mm -hmm. and everything you see the six feet apart wherever you mm -hmm. go. Mm -hmm. So they have that whenever you're going into a lobby of a hotel. Mm -hmm. And even if you go to an amusement park area, it's sort of the same way. Right. So they're making sure, so everything is not to full capacity right. so that people can be safe. Right. And uh, now, what are some of the things we should, should know if we uh, plan a trip? Okay. What, what are some of those things we, we should know to do or not do or, <laughs> or you know? So the first thing you want to do, once you decide where you want to go, mm -hmm. you want to look at the COVID rules for that area. Mm -hmm. So if it's nationally, first you want to maybe look at the numbers and see if the area that you're going in, whether they're rising, mm -hmm. and that may, you know, you can decide then, okay, is this some place I really need to go? Mm -hmm. um, you can decide to see where some of the ones are lower and say, hey, I've never seen that part of the U.S. The numbers <laughs> are low. Right. Let me go there this mm -hmm. time of year because they don't have a high count. So it actually gives you the opportunity to see some new places as well but if you're traveling uh, internationally you want to look at the COVID rules for that country yes. and then decide whether or not it's something, a place you want to go. There are some countries that uh, you do have to have the COVID test two days prior to arriving there so wow. you have to actually have proof mm -hmm. that you had to have a negative test when you land there mm -hmm. and then there are some countries that will also retest you two days after you're there so if you're going to be there for a week mm -hmm. you have to go to they'll tell you where to go to get tested in two days just to make sure mm -hmm. that you're still being you're safe, safe right? absolutely oh well I t I there's so many rules. But, it is. Um, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> and we get updates weekly. So mm -hmm. we get updates weekly on what they're doing and what changes are being made with COVID. Mm -hmm. Now, are there some places that's just strictly closed off limits that you, that if we, if a uh, United States citizen wanted to go to another country, mm -hmm. they just, no. There are some places that are still closed off. Mm -hmm. I personally cannot tell you which ones yeah. are. Mm -hmm. What what I will do, I always tell people, hey, let's go to the site and see what it's saying about that country. Yeah. And then that country will say, yes, we can. Mm -hmm. I One of the trips that unfortunately had to be canceled was Turks and Caicos. Mm -hmm. I, was at, I actually had two sisters where, that were going for a mm -hmm. birthday gift. And the country said, we're not letting anyone in from the U.S. Wow. So they canceled the trip mm -hmm. because they, they said at that particular time, that was back in June, mm -hmm. they weren't letting people into July and we had to just go back to their site every two weeks to see when they would be reopening. Mm -hmm. Now I know a lot of women you know they like I think do like groups. Yes. <laughs> so what are some places that you know would be uh, nice for if a group of women wanted to go and, and vacation? The Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody yes. loves the Caribbean. My top place, I have to say that I have booked this for Jamaica. Mm -hmm. uh, I have booked quite a few trips there, mm -hmm. so that would be my number one spot that I have used for travel. Mm -hmm. Then we have Cabo San Lucas. Mm -hmm. um, we have other parts of Mexico, the uh, Riviera Maya area. Mm -hmm. So those different types of areas, Aruba. Mm -hmm. So more people book the Caribbean than Caribbean. anything, yes. <laughs> And that will come to my next question. Where do we go to get the best uh, price for, uh, for vacation? I'm so glad you say, said that because so many people always say, oh, how do I get the best price? Mm -hmm. One of the things I always do with a customer whenever I sit with them, I always say, what is your budget? Mm. And the reason why I say that because the best price for one person may not be the best price for another. Right, so right. I always say, hey, I want you to sit down and think and look realistically on what you can spend mm -hmm. for this trip 
tell me your budget mm -hmm. and I will work on getting something within your personal budget. Yeah. I've had individuals where mm -hmm. their budget for a trip was a thousand. I had some their budget was five thousand. Yeah. So I plan accordingly. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so you can we do have best deals on, on our website. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have my personal website that I have as well and, and when you go on there it'll say hot deals. Mm -hmm. um, I would say hot deals are really the best because they're normally something that's within the next 30 to 45 days and you're getting a great deal for it. For so mm -hmm. I would say that actually is one of the best deals. But for any mm -hmm. trip that's planned out, mm -hmm. you definitely want to have a budget for okay, and work within that budget. Now, an another question I had is like, um, who's booking more? Like plane, train, air, ocean? <laughs> <laughs> who, who, where, where are most uh, travelers, uh, how are they going? Well, right now, Ocean is not booking <laughs> like it normally would have. And I'm yeah. a cruiser. I've been on, I think, six mm -hmm. different cruises, so I love them. Mm -hmm. So right now, the Oceans, of course, aren't booking because we don't have a lot of cruise lines going right. out of the U.S. Mm -hmm. But um, I would say planes more than anything because a lot of people, planes and hotels, I would say it's a combination mm -hmm. because a lot of people are still traveling within the U.S. And yes. so they'll do that package of hotel and uh, plane together okay. so those would be the top two now um, another question I had it was like um, what should we look for in a good reputable travel agency or agent okay awesome that's a great question <laughs> The first that you want to look at is their knowledge of where you're going. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to make sure that they are familiar with it mm -hmm. so that you're not going to a place and you get there and like, oh my goodness, where am I? And the travel agent said, oh, I, that's just the cheapest I found. Yeah. Sometimes that's always not the best. So you want to make sure that they're knowledgeable about the area that you're going to, that the company is reputable. Mm -hmm. Look at the number of years they've been in business. Mm -hmm. The Intella Travel Company that I'm with has been in business for more than 27 years. Mm -hmm. And actually when I joined the company, I called one of my friends. Uh, she worked for Disney for seven years and then for um, the Radisson Hotel for over 20 something years before she retired. And when I told her the company I joined, she said, oh my goodness, I really like them. I have a lot of respect for them. I've done fam trips with them. And that's what we call familiarization trips. Mm -hmm. uh, so that as an agent, you get to learn about the mm -hmm. place you're sending your clients. Yes. And so um, you want to make sure that they have that amount of knowledge where, okay, I know about this because I've been doing this for so long. Yes or that the company is very reputable. Mm -hmm. So I would say that they know about, that you want to make sure if you have an agent that's telling you, oh, you don't need insurance, I can't say that's a great agent. <laughs> right, so I wouldn't right, recommend right. that. So like with anything, even with that, you know, you want to make sure, even though some people don't get it, mm -hmm. if you had ever book a trip and the agent doesn't offer that to you, because that's a safety for you. Right. Um, a lot of people don't realize that things can happen to you while you're away, mm -hmm. where you don't have coverage, because some medical insurances are not international. Yeah. So I always tell people that your insurance really is more for your medical side than really for cancellation. Mm -hmm. Most people focus on, oh, I want to get insurance for cancellation. But no, you really want to get it. So just in case something happens to you, mm -hmm. you're covered yeah. wherever you are. Uh, any other red flags that, you know, we should look for if we're um, thinking about calling a travel agent? If they are taking cash from you, mm -hmm. you should not be having any cash go from hand mm -hmm. to hand. Everything should be electronic where you receive an electronic receipt. Okay. So if you ever have an agent say, oh, well stop by and give me your $500 and I'll <laughs> hand write you a receipt up. Mm -hmm. no. no. And I've had even people try to cash at me. Oh, let me cash at you. I said, no. Nope. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. put it, if, you're, if that's the only way that you can pay, then put in for your credit card through cash app and give me the numbers off that card. Yeah. And then those are the numbers that we will use so that in your system, it shows that you made this payment. Transaction. Okay. Absolutely. Right. So that would be another red flag. <laughs> now, if somebody wanted to get in contact with you for all your travel expertise, <laughs> <laughs> and you definitely have a lot of it, um, how could they contact you? Well, um, you can go onto my website. It's actually my name, Katrina McCurdy.intellatravel.com. 
facebook.com and look me up you can look up my website and it has all my information you can call me directly mm -hmm. my cell number is 267-251-0102 and I would definitely love to book a wonderful trip for you that you will remember and love. <laughs> I tell you, I'm about ready to book me right now, for you to book me something right now, I tell you. Absolutely. A lot of people have cabin fever, so yes. I've been getting more and more calls the past two weeks. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, so, Katrina, thank you so much for coming out and talking with me and, and sharing with my viewers and listeners um, your, your knowledge on the travel industry and um, things we need to know you know to travel safely mm -hmm. and have a good time to get the best bang for our bucks yes. and where to go and where not to go yes. uh, <laughs> it's truly it's been a pleasure so yes. thank you again thank you so much for having me you know, it's, it's been my pleasure a wonderful guests I want to thank my viewers for um, this and listeners for um, tuning in and until next time I'm Diane Allen and this is me